Writer is male or female? George Eliot. Oh yes, you guessed right. There's a name of a male person. But you were right right now. You were wrong. She is a female. So our writer is female, George Eliot. It's her pen name because it was difficult to write a novel with a female name. So she adopted this name, George Eliot. What was her real name? We will be reading in the next slides. The topic, the main topic is The Mill on the Floss, a novel, one of the greatest novels in English literature. So many things have been introduced in this novel like psychological analysis and like the stream of consciousness through her heroine. This is the outline of our lecture introduction to George Eliot, a very short introduction to George Eliot because the main topic is the mill and the floss. This novel we will discuss in detail. Its introduction, characterization and summary. So here is a short description of George Eliot. Born, she was born as Mary Ann Evans, it's her real name of George Eliot, Mary Ann Evans, 20, 22 November 1819. So this era is Victorian, Warwickshire, England, United Kingdom, and she died on 22 December 1880 at the age of 61 at Chelsea in London, England. Resting place. Highgate Cemetery, Cemetery means graveyard, East, Highgate, London, UK. So she lived in UK. Pen name as we have already read, George Eliot. Real name is Marian Evans and her occupation definitely a novelist, poet, journalist, translator. And this era, this period is Victorian period. Notable works, The Mill and the Floss, that we are concerned deeply, and there are written here as well. Spouse name, husband's name was John Cross, but her real partner was John Henry Lewis, with whom she lived a long time, for a long time, and uh, he was his, uh, her real partner in fact. Uh, but the legal husband was this, John Cross. So what are the characters of this novel? Switch to your mind to the characters of this novel. There are so many because it's not a short story. You already know the characters of a short story, two characters, three characters, or even there may be one character as well in short story versus a novel. So there are so many characters. In fact, in fact, uh, there are tens of characters but uh, we will discuss the important characters here i have written almost all the characters but we will discuss the important characters in our session maggie Tulliver. there's the heroine oh i missed a point that i said i think it was lucy but uh, lucy is her cousin maggie's cousin maggie is our heroine she's a child now when the novel gets started so Maggie Tulliver, Tulliver family, Maggie is the name of heroine, the intelligent, emotionally sensitive daughter of a country mill owner. So she is the daughter of a mill owner. There is a mill, not a very big one, but a small mill at the side of a river, floor mill it is, and her father is the owner of that mill. So, she is intelligent, she, she is emotional, she is sensitive. Her life is the central story of the novel. We'll discuss her life in detail in this novel. And we'll analyze her psychology as well, child psychology. Tom Tulliver, Maggie's older brother. One important character in the novel, Tom, Maggie's brother, heroine's brother whom she loves in spite of his strictness with her, although he is very strict, but she loves her, him too much, and vice versa, he loves her as well. Mr. Tulliver, fiery owner, angry owner of, Doc, of uh, Dolcott Mill. Dolcott Mill is the name of the mill we have discussed in Maggie's character. He is particularly attached to his daughter Maggie, whom he resembles in his generosity and emotional spontaneity. It is one reason that he loves his daughter as well. 
because uh, she resembles him in generosity and emotional spontaneity both are emotional father and daughter Mrs. Trelew obviously mother Maggie's mother Mrs. Glegg oldest of the daughters and sisters Mrs. Trelew her family is daughters so Mrs. Glegg is sister to Mrs. Trelew so she is maternal aunt of Maggie she is the oldest one in her sisters rather eldest and the one in whom the family strict traditions are preserved in the purest state she is cautious with money careful about money thinks about money too much mrs mr glegg a self made businessman now retired mrs pollett the second daughter and sister and mr pollett her husband mrs dean the third daughter and sister and mr dean her husband lucy dean another important character tom and maggie's cousin by dorson's standards she is the perfect child beautiful because in victorian age a girl who had these qualities was good was ideal so lucy was beautiful obedient and always quiet silent so she wasn't so much candid and frank as maggie was so there is a contrast with the heroine lawyer wickham important character arch enemy big enemy of mr tulliver maggie's father who consider all lawyers to be in league with the devil so here is a lawyer wickham and he is the enemy of tulliver mr tulliver philip wickham son of the lawyer so son of the lawyer philip wickham he has been deformed in a childhood accident so he is a bit deformed a special child by his uh, waist you may say he is highly sensitive about it an artist of moderate talent he falls in love with maggie when they meet at the school philip and tom attend together Stephen Guest, son of principal partner of Guest Company, Guest and Company Private Limited. He intends to marry Lucy Dean, but falls in love with her cousin Maggie. So Maggie is the heroine. So it's quite common that so many boys would be in affair with her. Bob Jacken, a lower class childhood companion of Tom Tulliver, friend to Tom Tulliver. He becomes a peddler. Means he sells. small things in streets and his clipped tongue he had a very oily tongue and showed business clever business sense or an important aid to tom's financial success so bob would help tom his friend in the time of crisis so that's all important characters we talked about now we start the summary of the novel be careful about the summary be attentive because there's a long one as i have said so your concentration is needed more concentration is needed my dear students so have a glass of water and pause the video and start it again the mill on the floor so opens with the unnamed narrator dreaming of doctorate mill as she or he knew it years ago at the time mr tulliver owner of the mill and its farm had decided to send his son tom away to school so here the novel starts at the time of the commencement of novel mr tulliver owner of the mill and its farm there was a small farm he had and uh, father had decided to send his son tom away to school so that he can become something more than a miller and farmer because uh, the father did not want him to be a miller or farmer so he wanted him to attend some school some good school when tom gets home for the summer he learns that his younger sister maggie forgot to feed his rabbits and they have all died so he had some pets uh, in his house but uh, when 
He returned from the school. He found that all of the pets have been died because of Maggie's carelessness. So we see here that Maggie is a bit careless and emotional child, but intelligent as well. So he's furious with her. Maggie is a very bright girl with good intentions and a good desire to please her brother. She always wants to make her brother happy, but it does not happen because uh, both uh, of their characters are different uh, one is very practical but maggie is very imaginative so this devastates her it is why that she has been devastated ruined destroyed as will happen frequently throughout their lives storm coldly holds her carelessness against her for a little while before forgiving her although he forgives her but uh, he condemns her so much in all of the novel he taunts her he chides her and he castigates her, so it uh, is kept in all of the novel. Tom's schooling at Mr. Stelling begins. Now he finds here Mr. Wickham, you know. Who is it, Mr. Wickham? Mr. Wickham, a lawyer, and there is Philip Wickham, his child, his son, and Mr. Wickham is a lawyer who, whom Mr. Tulliver detests, hates. What happens next? Uh, Philip is greatly impressed with her intelligence, with Maggie's intelligence and kind nature, as we know already. Two years later. Two years later, Maggie goes away to school with her cousin Lucy. Lucy is also there, but is called home. When? It is when, not a. Delete a. When Mr. Tulliver has lost his lawsuit against Mr. Powered, so he also has lost his uh, lawsuit. There was a case uh, in court, and uh, Mr. Tulliver lost that. A neighboring farmer, Mr. Peverett, was a neighboring farmer represented by Mr. Wickham. Mr. Wickham was his uh, lawyer, and he was also an enemy of Mr. Tulliver as well. So the story gets complicated here. The loss of the sword, the loss of this case combined with his legal fees means he will lose the mill and be completely bankrupt. Right before Maggie's return from the school, he learns that uh, mortgage was uh, on the farm, that there was so much credit on the farm, there is so much finance on the farm, so he was in debt in reality. So it's fallen into Mr. Wakem's hands. Uh, so his farm has gone to Mr. Wakem's hands. Uh, who was his enemy and uh, who was also his neighbor as well. And this news on top, everything else causes him to lose his senses. So Mr. Tulliver loses his uh, senses here in the novel. Maggie goes to Mr. Stellings to deliver the news to Tom because uh, uh, Tom was here at Mr. Stellings studying there. So uh, his sister went to inform Tom that they have lost lawsuit, they have lost the case and father is very upset who comes home with her. Bob Jacken offers Tom, now 19 years old boy, Tom young enough to support his father, an investment opportunity. So Bob Jacken, his friend, offers an investment opportunity that he takes with the help of Mr. and Mrs. Clegg and he manages to quickly multiply his savings. Meanwhile, Philip Wickham meets Maggie on one of her walks and pleads with her to meet with him regularly, secretly. So there was a kind of dating between two of them. She eventually finally agrees and they do so for almost a year. Philip finally tells Maggie that he is in love with her and she tells him that she can't imagine loving anyone more than she does him. But she could never marry him and risk hurting him her father and brother so deeply because he was their family's enemy's uh, um, son. It was why that she rejects, uh, she declined his proposal. Tom manages to earn enough money with his investments to pay back all of Mr. Tulliver's debt. So here we see that one complication is dissolved. Mr. Tulliver is so much joyous, delighted, happy and cherished and decides to quit working for Mr. Wickham because he started to uh, to work at Mr. Wickham's mill now because that mill has been in uh, Mr. Wickham's hands and uh, Mr. Tulliver was an employee, an employee there in his own mill. So 
that was a tragedy in the novel but now he decides to quit Mr. Wickham's job at his own mill but when he runs into him and tells him this now he runs to Mr. Wickham that I won't come to you tomorrow because my son has grown old and he has supported me so much now I don't need you so but when he goes there he runs into him and tells him this good news his anger gets the best of him and he ends up attacking Mr. Wakeham with a horse whip. So there was a tussle between two of them, there was a row, there was a quarrel, there was a fight between those of two because Mr. Wakeham incited him to uh, work here more and more but he didn't want to be so. So there was a fight between two of them and uh, they fought and uh, the story proceeds again. This brings on a stroke of some sort. Mr. Trelliver had a heart attack or brain hemorrhage or somewhat like that, and he dies soon after, telling Tom that he should work to buy the mill back. So it was his will, it was his last note before dying to his son that please work so much and you should work to buy the mill back, and he should never forget the victims as well. So this was the last note before dying. Two years later, Maggie returns to St. Augs to stay with her cousin Lucy Dean after having worked at his school since her father's death. So there's a proceeding in the story that she is at her aunt's now with Lucy, her cousin, when Maggie learns of Lucy's friendship with Philip Wickham. Now there's another complication. Now she, uh, Maggie comes to know that they are in affair with each other, Philip Wickham who had already proposed uh, Maggie as well. But here Maggie comes to know that Lucy's friendship, Lucy is in friendship with Philip Wickham. She tells Lucy about her prior forbidden relationship with him. So here she reveals a, a past story to her cousin as well. Lucy begins to scheme ways to get the pair together and Lucy, very fair cousin, she begins to scheme to plan ways to get the pair together that they must be together again. Maggie meets Stephen Guest who has been courting Lucy, who has been in a true love with Lucy as well. Stephen Guest, another character and immediately is very attracted to him and uh, she was also uh, attracted towards him as well and he to her. So both are attracted towards each other. Though they both try to ignore their feelings, eventually finally they are overwhelmed by them and so Maggie goes to visit her aunt Moss to get away from her little Maggie, deliberately gets herself away from her from them. Stephen comes to her there and tells her that he loves her. Stephen Guest again comes back to Lucy and uh, to, comes back to Maggie and tells that he's in love with her and they have to be together. Though Maggie is tempted, although Maggie felt a bit temptation, attraction towards him because he was so beautiful, so he, because he was so handsome, she insists that she could never be happy with him. But she says that uh, she cannot be happy with him with Stephen Guest because of the guilt she would feel about Lucy and Flip because uh, she would feel a bit of uh, conscience guilt in uh, her heart. So she refuses again. When Maggie returns to St. Augs, Lucy, trying to solidify the relationship between Maggie and Philip, arranges for them to be alone on a boat ride. So they go on a boat ride as well. Philip, though, is depressed because he has realized Maggie and Stephen have feelings for one another. So he arranges to have Stephen take his place, unintentionally leading to Stephen and Maggie being alone in the boat together. Now Stephen and Maggie are alone in a boat and the night is so beautiful that is a starry night, dark night also. Stephen convinces Maggie here is a turning point where Stephen, Stephen Guest who is very handsome, wealthy guy, though Stephen Guest convinces Maggie, persuades Maggie to elope with him, to run with him. So they leave the robot for a stream to York. So they have gone to York now in a very starry night. That was a very dreamy night between the two. The next morning, however, when they dock, when they land, Maggie realizes she can't allow herself to get her happiness out of Philip and Lucy's heart. But here is a prick of conscience on the part of Maggie and she thinks that Philip was in affair with Lucy, so I shouldn't have done that, but now she had done. So 
she tells Stephen she can't marry him after all and heads back to St. Augs to her aunt's house. When Maggie returns to St. Augs five days later, so she has been with the Stephen guest for five days and when she returns obviously everyone believes the worst of her. Everyone believed that uh, now uh, she isn't a virgin so including Tom. Tom was also thinking her brother as well was thinking the same thing that uh, uh, she had uh, done a bad job for their family's reputation and Tom refuses to offer her a home with him so Tom refuses to live with her as well. Mrs. Tulliver supports her although her mother supports her daughter Maggie the heroine of the novel though and together they lodge they live at childhood friend Bob Jenkins house now they are living at Bob Jenkins house. A letter comes from Stephen to his father, absolving Maggie of guilt. Now, uh, he writes a letter that uh, Maggie wasn't at fault at all. It was I who convinced her, but the damage to her reputation has been done. But now, the damage has been done to her reputation and uh, her family's name was gone now. The town's clergyman, there is a clergyman, Malvi Sahab, Dr. Ken tries to help her and even gives her a job as governess to his children. But when rumors start to swirl about, to go round about the two of them, but now the rumors are there that uh, Malvi Sahab, Dr. Ken uh, has given shelter to a girl uh, who was not good. So there was also the rumors between Dr. Ken and Maggie as well. So it was why that he tells her it would be best if she moved to another town altogether that she should leave the town at all because it's uh, on my name now. So Lucy who has been unwell uh, was ill since the shock of Maggie and Stephen running off together sneaks out one night to visit Maggie and tells her that once she is well again she will come to see her often. Maggie gets two letters one from Philip Wickham telling her he doesn't blame her and wishes her to feel no guilt for his sake uh, so he consoles her that uh, nothing has happened you must think like that I am with you and one from Stephen and one letter from Stephen Guest pleading or going with her to marry him and uh, Stephen Guest is still with her she resolves to turn him down for good but she thinks that I should not go for the both uh, she realizes the house is flooding now there is a proceeding in the novel now they are at Bob Joking and they are a flood because they are, um, their village is uh, on the bank of a river so that river was flooding and what happens now this is the last scene of the novel what happens in the last scene she realizes she sees she watches the house is flooding there is a flood in the house there's water in the house because the river is in flood and after waking Bob and his family gets into a boat to get to Dolcott Mill Mrs. Tolliver is safely out of town Mrs. Tolliver was already out of the town but Tom is there in the town in the village and gets into the boat with her so they both caught together and they are in the same boat because uh, Tom was also here to take uh, Maggie and uh, Maggie also wanted to take uh, her brother from his brother from his house uh, they both meet in one boat and they are now in one boat they have a moment of unspoken resolution determination that we would be saved they both were fighting with the water in the boat but what happened? A large piece of debris, a large piece of stone comes right into the earth path and drowns them. So both brother and sister have been drowned in the river in the flood and now we see that they are expired. Everyone else survives, everything else in the village survives. Nothing was happened except the flood and the siblings are buried next to one another. These both siblings, brother and sister were buried next to each other. So their graves were side by side. They could not be one in life but they are one in their death process and after life they are one with each other brother and sister they could not understand in life they could not understand each other but now they are one after death so life could not make them meet death made them meet at all they are one now 
so there's the story mainly of Maggie and uh, her brother they were quite different in behavior it was why that their uh, end would be like that as had happened in the novel so my dear student that was all about the novel thank you so much stay happy and stay at your homes and stay safe wish you best luck my dear students if you have any query please do ask me during the lecture time thank you so much